Hi everyone. It is still June 23rd. I want to bring your attention to some videos and articles that you might want to watch and read, maybe circulate. What is taking place, as far as I'm concerned, the volcano eruptions, the earthquakes that we are seeing, it is all induced by man. The storms um, that we are seeing, my God, the national mosaic, we are experiencing a frequency weather war. The harp, the next round harp rings are, I've never seen the National Mosaic so active with uh, extremely low frequencies and these next round harp signatures. And it, look at this. You can also see the extremely low frequencies cutting through the next red harp rings. And they're intersecting. So how's the weather up north, guys? North Dakota? South Dakota? And Nebraska? They, when you see these jut out in points, you know that that is, that's caused by man using frequencies. The harp rings right here and Wyoming. Is that Wyoming? Yeah. Um, my God, but here, Kansas, look at this, I mean, it is so beat up, chewed up with frequencies, and hope rings, next round hope rings, throughout it throughout the storm. So, yeah, that wild weather that mainstream media talks about, it's not so wild. It really is induced by man. Nothing so surprising about it. So, let me get back to this. Logic before authority has posted videos and he has found a grid pattern in the earthquakes in Hawaii, the volcano. When you see a grid pattern and you see that these earthquakes are shallow, you can pretty much assume that it is man-induced, technology-induced, harp or harp-like facility that is inducing this grid pattern. I saw a video, and it was back when I was in Great Barrington, so it must have been 2011, 2012. I have looked for that video, oh my god, so often, and I cannot find it. Maybe it was just taken off YouTube. But it was a man in Australia who found a grid pattern of earthquakes in Australia. And this grid pattern was so remarkably obvious and it, it went, the grid pattern of the earthquakes so evenly spaced and there must have been, my god, 50 earthquakes in this grid pattern and he did an awful lot of research and he was talking about harp um, that it was really the technology the use of the high frequency heating of the ionosphere, the steerable antennas. There, there was no explanation that you could say anything about these earthquakes being natural. So um, that's the grid pattern that Logic Before Authority found. But grid patterns have been found by many, and I'll show you. I do, and I'm sorry I didn't in my last video say, I did write it in my description, 
box, but subscribe to Dutch Sense. He focuses on earthquakes. And somebody left a comment below my video that I posted today saying that Dutch Sense had in his June 22nd, unfortunately they didn't leave the link to which video Dutch Sense has prepared. Prepare. Um, but here, earthquake unrest, large activity, multiple volcanic blasts across the Pacific, earthquake activity hits multiple expected areas, deep earthquake events continue. All of this, all of this is induced. I'm sorry. I, I just, earthquake grid pattern found in 2011, the earthquakes in Turkey. And many people speculate that, it, that it's hard, especially back in 2012, 2011. The Canary Islands, crazy earthquakes pattern. You see the pattern. And, oh, this is a Dutch Sense video that he posted on the 12th. Earthquake activity massive spread. Multiple volcanoes erupting simultaneously. Yeah, well, it's unfortunate that we can't get through to people when we have so much evidence that everything that we are seeing, pretty much, is induced by man. Here's another grid pattern uh, in 2011. In 2011, we saw another grid pattern. Canary Islands. So this, if you've not read this article, it's, I think, fascinating. Historical background of scalar electromagnetic weapons. Tesla. These are the Tesla. Well, he didn't want them as weapons, but they are being used as weapons. This article is written by Lieutenant Colonel, he's retired, Tom Bearden. Um, he was a nuclear engineer, war games analyst, military tactician for over 26 years, experience in air defense systems, tactics, operations, technical intelligence, anti-radiation missile countermeasures, nuclear weapons employment, computerized war games, military system requirements, and scalar, scalar energy, scalar electromagnetic weapons. And I have highlighted a couple of uh, sections of this article, but he's going through the whole timeline of the use of these weapons and the leaders of the major nations coming together and actually they signed agreements not to use these weapons against one another. Really? Well, neither the Soviets nor the United States would ever give up these weapons where they could control the world. He, he goes into great detail about what was observed the day before, the day of, the day after the Challenger was brought down. The Challenger launch and Tom Bearden believes that it was the Soviets that they used their scalar weapons to bring it down. Uh, scalar weapons can bring down planes. They can stop in an instant the plane, all of its electronics. Uh, oh, in this article it actually talks about how when you cross these scalar beams, and I've said in videos often, when you see these electromagnetic beams crossing, that's when they can be extremely dangerous and damaging, but it's also when they can produce a sound like BOOM! Oh, those mysterious booms. So mysterious. All right. May 18, 1977, the Soviets signed an agreement with the United States and 29 other countries promising, oh, I promise I'm not going to attack you by causing man-made storms, earthquakes, or tidal waves. 
the Soviets had already tested weather control against the United States in 1967 and had been steadily using it against America for almost a year. And he goes on all the way down to, let's see, um, he also talks about artificial clouds, radial, radial cloud patterns, Y shape, cloud patterns, and to November 1986. The use of these weapons, the leaders, the quotes, that he includes the leaders saying these weapons are like nothing man has ever even imagined. Oh, guess who said that? Brezhnev. All right. I also want to bring your attention to what I also thought was a fascinating article uh, written by Harry Mason. Bright Skies. Harry Mason um, was a a British geologist, geophysicist, and he moved to Australia. He met up with another geologist, friend of his, and they explored what, well, mainstream media in Australia back in um, as early as 1993 and I think earlier Wow, all of these strange meteors were just being seen in many places like Perth, Australia. And, well, if you have studied meteors, you know their characteristics. They didn't have the same characteristics as natural meteors. So, earthquakes were also happening in areas where earthquakes there were no there was no recorded history of any earthquakes so he and his friend went on this exploration to find out what the hell was going on in australia and he well it led him to australian prime ministers mysteriously disappearing those prime ministers who were just about to speak about the weapons and the U.S. military that was experimenting with these weapons in Australia. So, what did I highlight here? Um, you're going to have to read this article to fully understand, but he was looking into those electromagnetic weapons. Um, and here he's talking about the uh, these meteors that just did not have the same natural characteristics. So let me just put in earthquake and see, yes, here. Um, oh, where is it? I'm going to pause you. Well, this is very interesting. The meteors that were seen in Australia at this time that mainstream media was reporting. He says, if meteors are the source of these observations, then lately we appear to be continually encountering a very odd species of meteor that exhibits a previously undocumented, very exotic behavior in a very high statistical rate of arrival in Australia, apparently largely ignored by the rest of the world. We have the technology, man has the technology, to simulate virtually anything. They can simulate nuclear bombs. So think about that the simulation of a nuclear bomb going off. People think it's a nuclear bomb because, wow, they see the mushroom cloud. 
They've also dropped viruses on us with the aerosol spraying. Those viruses can be held dormant with the electromagnetic frequencies. They can take a virus from a dormant stage to an active stage. And they can do that within an entire region. So people see a nuclear bomb, the mushroom cloud, and with the electromagnetic frequencies, they can take those viruses in people that have remained dormant and activate them and people will think that they're dying of radiation. It's possible. Is it probable? Well, I don't think like evil, psychopathic, crazy nut jobs, but it is absolutely possible for them to have one of those scenarios on hand if they want to use it. Um, yeah, the events were not reported in the world press. So, it seems, let's go, this is a four-part series. Um, and crazy me, I thought I had highlighted it in a way here. The Great Sandy Desert Earthquakes <clears throat> are distributed almost exactly due east of the Exmouth very low frequency um, site and intriguingly are also located upon a magnetic North Pole Great Circle route from Exmouth's sister transmitter complex located at Cutler, Maine, the extremely low frequency facility that I have shown you in other videos. Cutler, Maine, that facility has been in operation for decades and it is a very powerful, powerful site. So, he connected all of the earthquakes um, and however you know people can trace particular factors and they can say wow the earthquakes in Australia could have been caused by a site in Cutler, Maine. Well think about it, HARP, the high frequency heating of the ionosphere the steerable antennas. They can heat a particular portion of the ionosphere and the energy can bounce back into a precise point on Earth. It's true. Slugs of electromagnetic energy could have been fired from Exmouth and steered or explosively initiated from Cutler and or other U.S. global transmitter sites onto the target test range within the Great Sandy Desert to initiate major earthquakes in a region previously and totally devoid of earthquakes. Um, there was a seismic grid pattern found in the earthquakes. And he writes, it's high time for Australians to do something about this state of affairs since we appear, appear sorry, to actually host a weapon system that has probably led to the death of not only Australians, but quite probably, probably many tens of thousands of our fellow humans in several country, countries across the globe. It's getting late and I'm having difficulty talking so... Um, he also writes, it appears that this system was utilized to create induced quakes in various parts of Russia, Japan, China, Iran, and also allowed the delivery of violent weather storms to North Korea that have inflicted famine and near total decimation of 50% of North Korea's agricultural land. Oh, wow. And here we've been hearing for decades those evil leaders that they have in North Korea. They're starving. 
They're starving their people. Uh-uh. No. North Korea, we completely destroyed so much of North Korea. North Korea is our CIA stage. So all of the bullshit with Trump negotiating and having success with Kim Jong-un, please, please stop believing all of this. Yeah, it sounds good. You want to believe that Trump is is real? Okay. Well, the New World Order Insider, Dr. Day, 1969, he giving a lecture talking about what was going to be happening in the United States from 1969 throughout the decades, the destruction of the United States. Dr. Day said repeatedly, people don't ask the right questions. They're too trusting. It's time for Americans to grow up and give up their naivete. Don't you think? So, um, I believe I highlighted, did I highlight any more? Let me just check. Yeah, January 1991, Gorbachev offered the Japanese the USSR super secret intercontinental range electromagnetic weapons technology capable of producing earthquakes for nine hundred million dollars and this electromagnetic weapon system had been on active service in the USSR since the early 1960s did I say that the Soviets were far advanced and it was really harp that balanced the power and that was uh, there were two two periods of construction of HARP. The second was the complete full array of antennas. So in 1997 with HARP uh, we were pretty much on the same scale as as Russia and yeah we still are and all of these countries are acting in unison as far as I'm concerned. Here, electromagnetic energy is released in microseconds to create nuclear bomb sized explosions or large earthquakes. And in this historical background of scalar weapons, did I mention that these scalar weapons can produce unexpected weather fronts and very high winds like that? Did you hear the snap of the finger? <laughs> yeah, so when you think about all of the people, especially around the California fires, all of those in California in that area, they were talking about there was no wind, and then there was so much wind. Scalar weapons. And I had a subscriber who left me a comment saying that she was walking down the street. She lived in, you know, that area. She was walking down the street and suddenly got hit with a burst of wind that almost knocked her off her feet. Yeah. Well, the booms are not mysterious. The wild weather, the wacky wild weather. Well, when you have a base of knowledge regarding the technology that many militaries are using Nothing is a surprise. I'll link below to everything.